Hitler's second blitzkrieg was an incredible gamble, but if it worked, it would change the tide of the war. The situation looked bleak for Adolf Hitler in the fall of 1944. The Russians had crushed his armies in the east and now marched through Poland, drawing ever closer to Germany. To the west, Allied armies had smashed through Hitler's Atlantic Wall defenses. These armies now surged east, while yet another Allied force was overrunning France from the south. In Italy, Rome had fallen. The Allied forces pushed relentlessly up the Italian boot. Hitler's armies were faced with the daunting task of defending multiple fronts. Germany would be choked into submission. The Reich would surely fall. The Fuhrer was unfazed. The mighty German armies would not defend. They would attack. Hitler chose to unleash his lightning strike in the Ardon Forest, the same place where his armies had met with great success in 1939. The goal was to cut Allied supply lines and break the spirit of the advancing Allied forces. By mid-December 1944, 20 divisions were poised to strike. Five more were ready in reserve. Altogether, Hitler had amassed 300,000 men, 970 armored units, and 1,900 artillery pieces. 83,000 Allied troops stretched across an 85-mile front had no knowledge of Hitler's daring plan. Before dawn, on December 16, 1944, the German armies attacked. The Battle of the Bulge had begun. It would be the largest battle of the European theater of conflict. The Germans opened up with a punishing artillery barrage along an 85-mile front. As shells exploded all around them, the American troops leapt from sleeping bags and dove into foxholes. The Germans moved quickly, overrunning the GIs who, despite being outnumbered 6 to 1 in some sectors, relentlessly defended every patch of ground, every clump of trees. The Battle of the Bulge would mark a new low in Nazi ruthlessness. As they advanced, the German troops executed scores of civilian men, women and children. Early on in the ferocious battle, a panzer column overwhelmed a group of GIs who were forced to surrender. Their hands still in the air, the GIs were machine gunned down in cold blood by German SS troops. 86 American prisoners died in what was to become known as the Mamadi Massacre. The Germans matched their ruthlessness with cunning. English-speaking German commandos, dressed in Allied uniforms and driving captured Allied vehicles, spread wild rumors, changed street signs, and sabotaged Allied communications, all to spread chaos and panic. The Americans set up roadblocks and interrogated all passing vehicles. On December 18, 1944, three German commandos were caught driving an Allied jeep. They were charged, tried, and executed. As in the Blitzkrieg of 1939, it was German armor that led the assault in the Ardon. By December 19th, German troops were well on their way to Luxembourg. Their ultimate goal, Antwerp. Two key Allied junctions, St. Vath and Bastogne, blocked the German advance. The Germans laid siege to St. Vath first. Time after time, the Germans threw artillery, tanks, and troops on the defenders of St. Vath. Time after time, the vastly outnumbered Americans beat back the Germans. On December 22nd, St. Vath fell. 6,000 of the original 22,000 American defenders of St. Vath had been killed or wounded. The Germans moved on to Bastogne. The Americans vowed to hold at all cost. The soldiers at Bastogne were hardened veterans of the 101st Airborne. They were used to being outnumbered, and they were used to waiting for reinforcements. They dug in, ready for a fierce fight. General George S. Patton sent his tanks rumbling north to provide reinforcements, but it would be days before they would arrive. By the 20th of December, Baston was surrounded. The German commander sent the Allies an ultimatum, surrender Baston or face annihilation. General McCulloch sent the Germans back his famous reply to the enemy commander from the American commander, nuts. The Germans were not the only enemy the Allies would face. A heavy snowfall blanketed the land on December 21st. The American rifles froze in the cold. The boots proved inadequate for the cold, damp winter. 
many suffered with trench foot. Others froze to death in the same uniform they'd been wearing since the summer invasion of Normandy. The Germans launched a punishing ground assault on the 23rd, but gained little ground. On Christmas Eve, the Luftwaffe unleashed a devastating aerial assault on the town. Still, the battered bastards of the Baton of Baston, as the American troops nicknamed themselves, held on. Christmas Day brought German artillery fire and more tanks. The Americans fought on, grimly waiting reinforcements. On December 26th, Patton's army finally arrived at Baston to relieve the besieged American forces. Days of fighting would follow, but the Germans would not take Baston. By now it was clear that Hitler's great gamble had failed. Rather than achieving a breakout, the Germans had only managed to cause the Allied line to bulge. Hitler tried several more attacks, hoping against hope that he could turn the tide one last time. None succeeded. On January 8, 1945, Hitler authorized the withdrawal of German troops. For the next few weeks, the Allies set about driving the Germans back. By January 23, 1945, the Allies had recaptured St. Vath. The Battle of the Bulge officially ended on January 28. The Germans had suffered over 100,000 casualties. The Allies had lost 10,276 men, nearly 50,000 were wounded, and an additional 3,218 were declared MIA. Not a single German tank had made it across the Meuse River. It was the last major offensive by German troops. It was the beginning of the end for the Nazi reign of terror. <laughs>